Mike, before we uh, turn to uh, the media for questions, one of our traditions here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl is to get you on record with a couple of local questions. First question, home of great barbecue, it, is it the preference wet ribs or dry ribs? Well, mine are wet. <laughs> Any particular reason? Uh, I, I just like it that way. I don't know. I was kind of raised that way. That's the way that uh, that my mom cooked. Uh, we fried everything, so it had that grease effect in it. So that's why I like it that way. Elvis, young Elvis, old Elvis. Uh, young Elvis. Um, in fact, my wife went down there yesterday. Um, it's pretty interesting. There was a lady that lived uh, in Stillwater, who used to um, take care of our uh, dogs, groomed our dogs, and. Um, as she got older, she moved uh, three blocks away from Graceland because uh, she said whenever she was finished with her life, she wanted to pass away as close as she could to Elvis. So my wife went down and visited and went through there yesterday. It's a pretty neat trip for her. And final thing, to get things rolling, uh, your comments is about your experience, team's experience this week here with us at the AutoZone. It's been really good. Uh, this is a very traditional bowl uh, in that we have the banquet um, functions for the players with both teams being in the same locations the way it used to be years and years ago. Um, the watch with our, our both schools on the watch. Um, I was just visiting with Sean uh, who works in our media relations driving over here today. Um, once we kind of figured out our way around downtown to be able to get to Beale Street and get, get to the barbecue and with the Sheraton, I know this is the first year you guys have used them. They've been fantastic. Um, it's been a great trip for us. Um, the practice facilities, things that I mentioned in the banquet the other day, um, the volunteer staff, when you guys, it takes a lot of work to put this together. AutoZone, obviously we can't do this without them. Um, and essentially what they do is they provide memories for your team and families and children forever. Not just a game, but, but six or seven days worth of memories. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. As far as the game in the week, go ahead, your opening comments uh, to the media about uh, preparation. Well, we've had a great week. Uh, it's been a traditional bowl week for us, uh, with the exception of uh, one day we had a little rain, uh, which was good. It allowed us to give the players a, a break on their legs. Um, but. Uh, for us, it's, it's been a very traditional week, and um, our players have, have been very enthusiastic. And as I had said uh, throughout the season, uh, I've enjoyed uh, the time that, that, um, that we've had with them and or I've had with them, uh, their willingness to compete and, and, and stay focused and, and prepare for the bowl. Questions, if you will uh, identify yourself before you ask your question. Coach, uh, Darren Knight from Payne Media Group. We're through the first year now of the new uh, situation with the red shirt rule. I'm curious now that we're pretty well through that. Uh, give us an idea of how you think it's worked and would you tweak it in any way? I think it's a, it's a good rule. It needs to be tweaked. In my opinion, it needs to be for uh, athletes that are in their first or second year. I think when you um, push it past that, then you get into a, a – for lack of a better term, Plan B in the old NFL, where you can pick guys up and guys can leave and play. I, I don't, I don't believe in that. I, I think there needs to be more loyalty uh, to the organization. Uh, but I think it has been good. It saves legs on players. Um, we're at 85 scholarships. In my opinion, we should be at 95 based on the way the game's played. Uh, there's so many more plays in a game than there was there were even 10 years ago. Uh, if you're not going to add scholarships, then we need to increase. Uh, the availability we have of players in games. Uh, in my, I'm not, I don't know why you just don't have five years of eligibility, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll take the four, but it needs to be tweaked. Edward Butler, Channel 8 News in Columbia. Last time you played Missouri in a bowl game, Gary Pinkle was the head coach. What have you seen similar and different between a Gary Pinkle Missouri team and a Barry Odom team on the team? Oh, I, there, there's a lot of similarities athletically. Uh, you know, they have – they. Coach always had really good inside guys that were undersized and, and played really hard. In fact, some of them are, I think, still playing in the league today. Um, had pass rushers on the edge. Um, were very well coached. And, and I see that with Coach Odom and his team. Um, they've, they've implemented a really good offensive scheme. Their quarterback's a really good player. Uh, could very well be the first quarterback taken in the draft. 
so you're you're seeing a, a team that's matured. It looks like they're um, starting to adapt to his style and his philosophies. It takes a few years to get going as a head coach. So there's some similarities there. Coach Pinkle was a heck of a football coach. He had a lot of success at Toledo and came into Missouri and we had really, really good football teams. So um, uh, it's, it's a, a different look offensively a little bit, but um, athletically and the way they play, very similar. They're all different, uh, you know. Obviously, with Kyler's ability to um, play the game the way he plays, and um, uh, Will Greer's uh, would be more like this one, um, in that they have the ability to run a little bit and move around and make a play. Not going to do it a lot. Uh, they want to do it inside the 12-yard line. Um, so uh, you have to, you know, you have to plan for each one of them differently, but. Um, you know, he's a really good player and uh, probably going to play this game for another 10 or 12 years. Steve Gardner, the Associated Press. I'm just wondering how you thought about where your rushing attack is at right now without Dylan Williams. How's the guys going in and what kind of look and practice? Well, Chuba's done a good job. And, uh, you know, obviously when you don't, uh, you know, when we lost Justice, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, he's a fantastic player. I mean, he's a guy that's good enough to play in the NFL, and he's not with you, then you're, you're certainly not going to be as good at rushing the football as you were if, if he were here. Um, but uh, Chuba and LD have, have stepped up, and, and they're, they're the guys that are, are in our program now. We're coaching them, and we have confidence in their ability to rush the football. Well, I'll say the same thing I said then. Every game's important. Uh, and, and the most important thing that we can instill in our players is the um, willingness to prepare and compete. And uh, that's the responsibility we have in every game that we, we approach. Uh, and it's been that way ever since I've been the head coach, going on 15 years now. So every game matters. Um, you know, beyond that, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't even begin to say one way or the other uh, with – with uh, the young men that we coach now. Um, we win this game, we start in the middle of January in winter conditioning. Uh, if you don't win the game, you start in January in the middle of winter conditioning. Uh, that's just kind of the way it is. But uh, every game's important. We want to go out and compete. We want to play hard. Uh, we want to have a clean game uh, and uh, play the very best football that we can. Feel like who? Fans. Do you want me to remind you how much that I'm concerned about yeah. fans? They do buy the tickets and make the donations. Uh, I have to be concerned with what's going on internally in our organization and not people outside the program. Mike, you had a lot of practices back home. You got to see a lot of your younger players. Uh, with that red shirt rule and knowing there's a lot of guys on your squad that can play tomorrow. And they're still red shirt. Did you find some that might help you against Missouri? No, uh, we won't have any changes as far as guys that are starting the games or playing like that. We uh, this bowl game being as late as it is allowed us to uh, really um, practice and have another spring ball, as I've said uh, several times, and that that's what I really enjoyed about it. But for the most part, we have the guys that are playing in the game. And that kind of goes back to what Jenny said and the fact that um, we're going to put the players out there that we feel like give us the best chance to perform and win the football game. And in most cases, it won't be a player that hadn't played in this in the season. Mike, after the TCU game, you talked about just how up and down a, a, a season this was and how you, know, you guys were trying to figure out how do we best get these guys ready to play. As you've thought about that, I know it's been busy with any lessons or feel like you as a staff or in, in, maybe even you know, more team-wide have figured out some ways to address that moving forward? Address what? Just to, 
the up and down nature of this team and how you sort of, I think you said you just never kind of got a handle on how to get them in the best spot for games? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking me, but um, when, when you go through a transition year uh, with a new quarterback, um, you have uh, multiple players offensively that start the season that aren't there during the season to end the season. Um, you go through transition with linemen that are moving around. Um, so even though we had um, really good numbers offensively and were able to score points, there was times that we didn't perform as well as we needed to. Uh, there's different ways to look at it. I don't know that we can ever pinpoint it for sure, but um, there was times that, uh, that Taylor didn't play as well as we wanted him to, and some of that could have been because of the, the schemes and the game plans that Mike had in for him. Maybe we overloaded him at times. Uh, and then there was other times during the year that our defense really adapted and, and played well with Coach Knoll's schemes, um, and then there was times that they didn't. And so if you just get a quick answer, you'd say that there were some adjustments going on on that side of the ball, and then on the offensive side of the ball, um, we were kind of feeling our way through with a new quarterback. Um, it did ha it did help us uh, that we had enough depth on the offensive line to keep guys together, um, but it didn't help that we had to move guys around. This is one of the first years since four or five years ago that we had to shuffle guys around the offensive line. I don't, I've never felt good about that, uh, just the continuity of those guys, and then. Um, how how much better we could have played at the end of the year if Justice would have played? Uh, I don't know, but that was also a factor. I guess maybe does it boil down to how do you coach consistency when there's a lot of inconsistencies? Is that is that maybe the biggest question? Is oh, you know, in my years of doing this, I would say it's probably just um, musical chairs creates inconsistency. Um, when you're when you're shuffling guys around and you you have to adjust in practice and you get two days to prepare for a game, it's not as easy. We had been fortunate over the last two and a half years. Um, last time we had to do that is when we lost Mason for the Sugar Bowl, um, and you know you just don't play very well when you're trying to get other guys ready and then you put another guy in. So I would say that. Um, shuffling the guys around was the most difficult part for us this year. I remember him coming out then. Um, uh, most of the players from, from in that area went to Oklahoma. Um, in fact, they all went to the camps. I think that, um, that he went to Oklahoma's camp. I don't think he ever came to our camp. I can't remember. But uh, I remember his name, and I remember him coming out of high school. They're good. Shane's worked in there. Deontay's worked in there. So, you know, you have Marcus. You got three guys for two positions, and they've rotated in a little bit. And um, Shane has practiced the last five or six real practices off and on, coming back from his injury. Um, he should be available if we need him. But, um, you know, you're looking at, at Marcus and Deontay. Mike, with Relford deciding to play, does this, could he help himself? Draft-wise? Oh, yeah. In, in, yeah in, any, any player that's in the category of uh, beyond a second-round pick, in my opinion, can certainly help themselves in a bowl game. And how much does it mean to you that he decided to play? Well, it means a lot to us in, in the fact that, uh, you know, he's finishing the commitment that he has to our organization. And we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, he's going to graduate and, and move on to the NFL. And, and uh, you know, at times I think with young men that's a pretty common move. It'll, it'll increase even more in the future. Uh, but um, we appreciate him being here and, and helping lead our team and be out there with us in the, in the final game. Coach Derek was very academic. Was Taylor Cornelius have to play football tomorrow to be successful? I didn't. I couldn't hear you. I, I, can, I didn't get it. Does Taylor Cornelius have to play flawless tomorrow? 
Oh, flawless. Well, we've never seen a guy play flawless. Um, I've not ever seen that happen, but um, we need him to play good. I mean, a quarterback's a big deal in our offense. I mean, over the years, um, if our quarterbacks play well, we, we end up doing pretty good. If our quarterbacks don't, um, then we don't really score as many points. And we play in a league uh, where teams score a lot of points, um, like Missouri. Missouri offensively could jump right in the Big 12 and be right at home. So we need to play well on offense and score points. We just need to be more sound. Um, when we lost Darian Daniels, who struggled on the inside run game, he lost a 325-pound guy that was a pretty good football player. And we lost him right before we started to get into the meat of the schedule, and that set us back a little bit. Um, we tried to shore up the, uh, the inside part of our defense in recruiting, and we hope that works out well for us. Um, I, I think the, uh, the back end, our safeties, corners, and, and outside backers who play and cover the pass, we feel better about how they've matured as the season's gone on. But it's been an adjustment. It's a completely different system than what we were doing before. And, and I think they're progressing. But um, the spring will be really important. Um, the other thing you're looking at is 24 and 31 are guys that got thrown into fire in, in the middle of the year. And they're young. And they've made some adjustments and gotten a little better. If he continues on and uh, stays on course with, with uh, where he's at, he's a very unselfish. He's a tremendously hard worker. Um, he's tough. Uh, he's intelligent. Uh, he's gifted. He can go up, take the ball at the highest point, and can make all the catches. He's, he's right there with the rest of them. He's just young. But as he progresses, uh, he'll continue to make plays. And um, if he keeps his head on straight and stays focused, he'll be like the rest of them. Well, they have a the, the couple guys inside. They're good players. <clears throat> uh, one of them particularly makes a lot of plays. Um, the interesting matchup, it, their corners are long and lanky and, and can run a little bit, and it'll be interesting to see. They are about 50-50 man and zone, and um, they've, they've pressed some and, and challenged. Uh, I'm going to guess they're going to do what they do. Uh, they're, they're probably not going to look at tape and see us as, as any threat to where they have to change their schemes. So uh, that matchup, if they press and keep a safety in the middle field and us being able to attack them and those corners covering our wide outs will be an interesting matchup for us. Mike, you guys have had some really good stability on your staff, um, relatively no turnover, which is pretty rare. What's, what do you see as a benefit to that um, over these last few years to have guys stay? And then you're such as being talked about as a guy, again, this offseason that might land somewhere else, maybe behind the scenes and how you deal with that. Well, I, I've said this before, and, I, and I'll say it again, and you can ask them, but I'm the easiest guy in the country to work for. That's why, I go, that's why coaches stay. They're very well paid. Um, we work normal hours. We don't overwork. It's a family organization. Um, guys take care of their business. I don't micromanage them. So they stay. Um, we will always have coaches leave to move up. Um, guys will move on to be coordinators. Guys will move on to be head coaches. Um, Yersich is a guy whose name has been out there the last three years. Um, interesting how uh, some of the fans, people abuse on him, but everybody else in the country wants him. Uh, pretty interesting concept. But um, at some point, Mike's going to move on. I told you guys last year during bowl prep that I wouldn't be shocked if Mike's not a head coach or moves on to the – you know, he's had interest from the NFL. There's the NFL um, teams that have called about him. And as the NFL starts, starts to migrate towards college football on offense, so uh, at some point, he's going to move on. He's, I don't know, 41 or 42, or I don't know how old he is right now. But he's at a point in his career that that could happen. We would love to keep, keep him here. Um, we're not going to be able to pay what other schools will potentially offer him. So if he ever gets a run to be um, a coordinator at all the schools that are interested in him or maybe move on to the NFL, um, that's probably going to be his next move versus um, 
you know, you just call it like it is. Some of the other head coaching jobs you get at levels that um, are lower pay about a third or a fourth of what these guys are making as coordinators. So um, we hope to keep him as long as we can, but at some point he'll move on. And if he does, um, we wish him the best. He's been very loyal and been great to the program. Um, as far as how we handle that with the coaches, uh, I think I, Mark asked me that a couple weeks ago or something. I tell my coaches if they want to talk to any school, any NFL team, uh, any high school team, whatever, they're good. They can do that. They don't even have to ask for my permission because why, why do I need to give them my permission? Um, we live in a time where everybody has a cell phone. Coaches are out recruiting. They can meet anywhere they want. That's just a waste of time. If they come to me and say, I want to take this job, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them, have conversation. But otherwise, I tell them, I, I don't need to know what's going on out there. I just need you to be loyal, work hard, and continue to recruit for Oklahoma State. No, we had a home run with Mike, uh, and, the, and I, I, I mentioned to you guys, I don't know how many years has he been with me now, six, seven? So, uh, so uh, we went and got him because I felt like that if we would have went and got a named guy in two years, he'd have left again, because that's what was happening to us was we bring a guy in, we, we, we average 50 points a game, and the guy leaves. Bring a guy in, you average 50 points a game, the guy leaves. So uh, I was tired of dealing with that, and so I said, surely they won't want a guy from Shippensburg for a few years. And honestly, it worked out uh, great. It's worked out uh, really good for Mike, and it's worked out really good for us. And, and um, you know, maybe he's here with us next year. Uh, maybe he's not. But either way, we'll go get another one and keep going. Mm -hmm. Is that the biggest thing in the consistency that you just don't have to mess with it? Or are there some other benefits that to have, you know, Hammerschmidt or Dunn or whoever you want to say be there for six, eight, however long? I mean, the benefits to the program that you feel like are out there. Like you, you're talking about other than the guys yeah. that are staying? Yeah, just, just Well, yeah, you, the continuity is huge. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess I can freely say this now. Uh, it's it's like if you look around the country that athletic directors who have said, you know, we've had a couple bad years, but I'm staying with this head coach. I'm going to do it. And then they end up doing pretty good. They made a much better choice because in a smaller scale, when you make a change, you're changing a lot. And unless you're in a program where you have really, really, really good players, it's difficult to make a wholesale change as a coordinator or a head coach and then start showing up within the first couple of years. So the assistant coaches, they play a big role in this. And, and at Oklahoma State, um, once Fedora left, and then I called plays for a couple of years, and then we, I said, I'm out of that, and we started bringing coordinators in. When we bring those guys in, for the most part, they adapt to our terminology. And that consistency has helped our team, in our opinion. Well, it's the same with assistant coaches with Dunn, who I think has been with me eight or nine years, and, and, the, and the other guys from the standpoint that unless there's just a, a really, really good reason to make a change, the continuity is important. Forget football in recruiting. I mean, it's hard enough to recruit anyway, much less put a guy in an area or going after players that he's somewhat uh, uncomfortable with because he hasn't been in that area. Uh, preferable or, or uh, like for us in Texas. So all those things tie in. It's a pretty big picture. Coach, Heather, with Fox and Green, Tulsa, you guys come to this game and not the favorite. You've had a slight advantage. Is that upset? When does this season, do you like that mentality of being one of the underdogs? Oh, I, I, I wish we were a 20-point favorite. Uh, but um, – our preparation is the same. Missouri's a really good team. Uh, could be the best team we've played overall as a balanced football team. They're good all over the board. Uh, and when you have a quarterback that's potentially the first player taken in the draft at that position, you're a really good team. They're solid. Um, they're mature. So uh, 
I understand uh, why it's uh, the way it is, but um, as I said 20 minutes ago, that our team has, has worked really hard. Uh, I think our coaches have really good plans, and, uh, and I expect our guys to play very, very well, and we're looking forward to the game. I don't know that anybody ever really talks about the underdog much. Um, I don't, but maybe the players feel that because I'm sure they're all on social media and they're out there and they know what's going on. Probably takes care of itself. You know, you would have to ask them that. Um, with with young people now and and uh, just a different perspective on life and things, I'm I'm not sure. Um, I, I would just say that. To go back to uh, to what I was um, saying earlier with Jenny, we have stressed the importance of every game we play. And as soon as we accepted the bid to play in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, the first meeting we had was we get an opportunity to have 16 practices, and you have a responsibility to get your butt ready to play. And and that's what we're doing. You're, you're representing Oklahoma State, and you're representing the Big 12. And our players have prepared that way, so I expect them to play very well. Unique in that way. Um, what what I remember is being a kid, little, uh, and and uh, the game was on, and I remember my mom and dad talking about Bear Bryant coaching in it, and and you know I was young, I, I didn't know who Bear Bryant was, uh, but I remember them talking about that, and so and then just the history of the Liberty Bowl, I think it's cool that um, AutoZone um, has their name there, but the Liberty Bowl has kept their name. I think that's pretty cool, uh, in my opinion, and and the tradition. Uh, that, that they have here uh, in this bowl uh, and, and the history uh, is unique, and, uh, and I think that's special. Has Josh Henson been able to give you any insight on what Missouri does, or has that terminology and everything changed that much since he left? I, yeah, that's, there's nothing there that he can, he can help with. Um, they've had two coordinators since then, I think, and so um, Josh has his hands full just getting his guys to do the right thing, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, there's not much there. Um, players change. You know, even if there were players that are on the team that maybe he was there and he knew two, three years later, they're so much different. So not really. Yeah, well, you don't do anything. Um, you know, what's funny, uh, we, we used to have to concern ourselves with that because Mason, um, you know, Mason at times struggled a little bit because his hands are really small. Um, but Taylor's thrown the ball well when we practiced in rain. Uh, control what we can control, as you know. Can't do anything about it. But no, it doesn't change our preparation. Anyone else? New Year's resolution. Uh, let's think about that. Well, well, I don't. I don't smoke. Um, let's see. I don't drink Tall Boys. Uh, no doubt. To go along with the article that I think you're writing, there's times this year that I went straight to the whiskey. I didn't even go to the Call Boy. So. No, I love my players. They're good. Uh, but anyway, uh, t for me, uh, I, I think to be uh, to be the best person that I can be and provide for our team and uh, make sure that the uh, 200 people in our organization, players, coaches, administrators, families, uh, have the best experience they can have. And, and hopefully we can instill in, in our players every year the importance of uh, what it takes to, to be in our cowboy culture, um, to, uh, to graduate from Oklahoma State. To, to be productive and go out in the world and, and, and uh, take care of yourself, be a man. You know, if you choose to marry and have family, take care of your wife, take care of your kids, get a job, work your ass off, uh, and be a productive citizen. That's more important to me than a lot of things. Uh, not to discredit, we want to go out there and play our butt off and have a heck of a game tomorrow. Any other questions? We're good? Thank you. All right, thank you all. We're going to do a quick photo op with